Happy New Year, my fellow wealth hackers. This is Erwin Cito bringing you the Truth About Real Estate Investing show for Canadians. I'd like to start off by saying uh, I hope everyone's all right out there. Uh, sorry to hear. Sorry for anyone who's having a tough time with this latest round of lockdowns and online school. I know it sucks, uh, but do remember like 12 months ago, uh, we are much better off than we were 12 months ago. And we're much closer to the end of the pandemic. Uh, as hard as it is to uh, not to place blame against government or scientists or big pharma or XYZ group, uh, I personally choose to blame the virus, which is natural. I, for, and I blame them for all the current problems we currently face. A stupid, faceless, natural virus that's part of nature and it's doing what it's designed to do. Then uh, I personally give up being angry because there's no point. Uh, it's nothing I can do about uh, how a virus operates other than getting my shots. Cherry and I are boosted already and the kids are getting their second shots uh, this weekend. Anyways, uh, getting angry is exactly what the mainstream media wants you to do. Uh, I personally do not like being lied to, manipulated, uh, and I don't like getting emotional. And that's exactly what I teach my kids not to do. I teach them to control their emotions. Uh, I know my energy is better spent. There's better things to do than, than deal with anything in the mainstream media <laughs> or follow anything they say, uh, because there's a lot more I can be doing to support my family in this community. Uh, one thing is that I'm doing for my family is we started, we recently started an online jujitsu program. Uh, for those who don't know what jujitsu is, it's widely considered the most effective martial art for self-defense purposes. Uh, we all, my family and I used to all be in jujitsu uh, before I got injured. And then, of course, during the pandemic, our club had a temporary shutdown. Uh, that's when we all pivoted to kickboxing, uh, which is a, uh, a sport that is very practical as a martial art and can be done safely because there's less contact <laughs> compared to jiu-jitsu. Uh, Gracie Games is the name of the program. Uh, so shout out to Gracie Games. Uh, it's a super cheap program. It's all online. It's pre-recorded $70 US for the entire program. The kids and I watch video instruction and demonstrations. They de the instructors demonstrate with kids. Uh, so all we have to do is watch the video, pause the video when we're told to, and then we practice what we just watched. Uh, for the parents, that's me. Uh, the job is to help teach and to role play. Uh, I pretend I'm the, I'm the joker. And then my kids are, uh, I call them spider kid. So, you know, there's spider man, my kids are spider kids and I'm the joker and I'm trying to do bad things and they're supposed to stop me. <laughs> Uh, today in jiu-jitsu, we covered uh, what's called a double leg takedown. It's basically tackling, right? So basically, my kids now know how to tackle me. They know how to tackle adults. They can tackle people of their own size quite easily now, uh, now that they're educated. And they also, they, can also, they also know how to pin me down. Uh, my kids are still at an age where they uh, like to hang out with me, so I'll enjoy this while I can and teach them some practical skills. Uh, lockdown or no lockdown, I wanted the kids to practice. I wanted the kids to practice and learn jujitsu um, at home, anyways. Uh, it was I always wanted to do these sorts of things to accelerate their progress outside of class. Uh, when, so when the club reopens, uh, hopefully opens re next month, they'll hit the ground running. So this is really no different than regular school. Like um, our kids are taking English and math. Uh, they've been doing one-on-one -on -one virtual tutoring with Kumon. Uh, shout out to Kumon. Uh, ever since the school system closed to in-person classes, which has been like a year and a half, um, my daughter is in grade two public school and she's already doing division uh, with remainders. Uh, and my son is in grade one. He's able to add uh, two double digit numbers together. Uh, the investment into English has paid off as well as my kids, uh, they love to read. Uh, I often find them in their free time reading uh, whenever when they're unsupervised, they'll go pick up a book and read. And when we go out for dinner, often they'll bring a book and read. Um, we're going to the library once or twice per week to sign out six or seven or eight books at a time because that's how many how much they consume between session library visits. And the libraries are open, thank goodness. Uh, as much as the pandemic is not fun, uh, I know it could be worse, uh, like, like it was 12 months ago. And it can be worse for some people. Like, I'm always grateful to be in Canada. Because my uh, one of our employees in who lives in Cebu, Philippines, he still doesn't have water, electricity, or internet after their city was hit by the worst hurricane in their history. It's been it's been it's been weeks without water, 
electricity internet. In that context, my life's pretty good in comparison. Uh, plus, I have a lot of optimism that the pandemic will end in a couple months. Uh, there's a lot of good science coming out. Apologies to those who don't like science, but uh, there should be a whole bunch of treatments that are coming out. Some of them are even Joe Rogan approved. <laughs> uh, let's talk about a little bit of real estate. Uh, I, most people know uh, we bought a new office. It's an ex we're expanding. We're not moving. We're expanding. It's the and it's being renovated. It's a pretty decent sized project. It's six. It's a six figure renovation. It is largely cosmetic, but it does involve a new ceiling, moving a bunch of HVAC, a new bathroom, a new kitchenette. Uh, we're having to rejig some of the office space. We're creating what's called foam booths, uh, which in the office in the in the commercial office real estate world, these are private meeting rooms for folks to conduct a private phone call or uh, or like a Zoom call. These are really meant for one person. It's really a small a room big enough just for one person and a desk, right? So we haven't we're building out about three of those in the new space. So if anyone's interested in office real estate, like this, these are all the rage now on the current world that we live in uh, and uh and also just an update as to how we're diversifying how we're allocating our capital in 2021 so last year uh we invested our investments are were 80 percent into real estate so um it's a property that we personally control or through a corporation that cherry and i own uh, and then the other 20% would have been split into stock hacking, cryptos, cryptos, uh, RSP, TFSAs, uh, and also some real estate developments. I actually just signed, uh, signed paperwork yesterday to invest in a real estate development in uh, Stouffville, which is northeast of Toronto. Uh, I'm sharing this personally because I always find it interesting to learn how others are allocating their capital across their investments, as it tells me about their uh, investor profile investment profile, risk profile, and most importantly, where they see opportunity. Uh, for example, if I if someone tells me they're overweight in cryptocurrency, I'm naturally gonna ask about cryptocurrency uh, because maybe they know something I don't. <laughs> uh, uh, and also, for example, I still I speak to many non-investors, uh, novice investors pretty regularly. And they often ask, is it too late to invest in real estate? Funny enough, people have been asking me this for the last 10 years. <laughs> I share with them that I just bought two, two, duplex, two duplexes in 2021, which was last year. We also just bought our office that we closed in in December. And uh, we applied to, we, our plan is to buy uh, one investment property per year. Uh, whenever we have the capital available, we'll buy, just buy a property. Um, and when I explained to novices that Canada just broke a record, in executing their plan. So the plan was to allow a record breaking plan to allow 401,000 new immigrants to Canada. They, they, they did it in a pandemic. And that is over 1% growth uh, just this year. And their plan is to add another 400,000 plus for the next few years. Um, you know, some of these people, some of these couple million people are going to need a place to live. And there's nothing being built fast enough to accommodate the growth uh, of the country and uh, more and just as important, no one's building any more land. So I'm just getting in front of it. If you too want to learn the best practices uh, on investing in real estate, uh, practices that my team and I learned uh, from the show and through practice, uh, we're all investors ourselves. We've coached hundreds of investors to execute successfully. Uh, then you don't want to miss our next free training on the number one investment strategy in real estate. So just go to www.infinitywealth.ca to register. If you're looking for a new side hustle uh, in 2022 that produces cash flow that can be done from your phone, well, FYI, the trades that we shared in our uh, among our stock hacker community in 2021 had an over 95% success rate of being uh, of profitable trades. Uh, for those interested in a free demonstration which is really a more advanced one than the one I gave my kid cousin, my kid cousin who returned 50% in 2021, go to stockhackeracademy.ca, go to the top right and register for the next free class. It's all virtual at this time. Uh, and of course, past results do not predict the future. On to this week's show. We have an action taker who didn't like the lockdowns and restrictions in Ontario, in Canada. 
So he sold his house in Oshawa, Ontario, and he moved the whole family to Costa Rica permanently. <laughs> Today, we have the famous Rob Brake of the Breakthrough Real Estate Investing Podcast since 2014. Um, he started the podcast in 2014. Rob is a real estate investor, entrepreneur, licensed real estate professional in both Ontario and Costa Rica. Not many people can say that. He's done wholesaling, flipping, buy and hold, student rentals, duplexes, buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and repeats, aka Burrs in Durham, Ontario, and now Costa Rica. Rob and I have been friends for years, even before he joined Rockstar Real Estate Brokerage years ago. He's since left, but uh, we stay in touch, and I finally got back uh, on the show to give us an update on investing and living somewhere where the winters aren't trying to kill you. <laughs> Apologies, it's my attempt at comedy. Winters are cold here. <laughs> Rob shares about flipping in Costa Rica, why he chose the coastal village of Playa Portrero to buy a house and settle. Uh, it's actually it's actually intended to be an investment property. He, Rob shares how his boys are adjusting to new surroundings, private school. Uh, investment side, the opportunities for short-term rentals, renovation projects, and what the numbers look like. This is an investment show, so of course we always talk about numbers. Uh, this show is also the truth about the call the truth about real estate investing, and Rob is being the good guy that he is. He shares his honest opinion on where to best invest for a return on investment. For you aspiring podcasters or realtors, uh, I asked Rob if he could do it all again, what he'd do differently. Uh, and then side note, maybe one of our real estate investor friends would be kind enough to organize a meetup in Costa Rica or wherever you may be where it's nice and warm so that we may, we investors may go all, we may all go have a working vacation. I had a great time catching it with Rob break and I hope you enjoyed the episode as much as I enjoyed recording it. Uh, and then to find Rob's podcast, his website is uh, breakthroughpodcast.ca. Please enjoy the show. Hello, Rob. What's keeping you busy these days? Wow, where do I start? That's a good way to jump into it. What's keeping you busy these days? Yeah, you're busy, um, aren't you? Are you not busy? I, you know what? I've been invited on a lot of podcasts lately. Jerks. I, uh, so I've been doing that. Awesome. But uh, enjoying the sun. I was telling you, I just got back from uh, my fir very first sailing lesson. So that was really interesting. Something uh -huh. that... Um, that my family gave me for Christmas. Oh, cool. So I would never have bought it for myself. Uh -huh. You know, I just, I, I can't be that indulgent. Uh -huh. And when someone else gives it to me, there's my permission to go and do it. So that was a actually fantastic. Um, never really done anything like that before. So love it. It's it an was, experience and it's something you would have done for yourself and you enjoyed it. That's like, I was like, wow, triple crown present. <laughs> heck yeah. And it was, it was two hours on the water. Like right away, you know, we don't mess around here on the shore. I know if I was taking sailing lessons in Ontario, first of all, I'd have to wait another six months. Uh, secondly, um, it's, I, I'm sure it wouldn't have been like, uh, so here's the extent of what I, I learned before we went out was basically, here's how the wind works against the boat, right? This is the way that you want to think about it. And then jump in the boat. I'm going to give you a demonstration of how to turn and where to move and watch out for the mass this and now you do it okay let's go in the water so that's what it was you know and i i i i'm more like i learn better i think that way the hands on hands on you just yeah let's just go learn as we go this is definitely how i learned real estate what kind of boat was it like can you tell me anything about it like it's, you know most people are the name of it most people are just listening so that, let's try to paint my mental picture yeah and someone asked me actually what kind of boat we were going out in uh the day before yesterday and i said didn't didn't you hear me just say that it was going to be my first lesson <laughs> i have no idea but it was it was actually quite a small um i mean i could send you a picture a a small picture. it's just it's a small little um uh small little sailboat is plastic mm -hmm. right but is it's like an actual sailboat a lot of the ones like I'd been out with a friend before I never touched anything. I just rode as a passenger and they were on sort of like this mesh catamaran, mm -hmm. very small. Mm -hmm. So that's what I thought we were going to be in, but we were, we ended up being in this other one. Is it like, um, is it like the size of a canoe? Bigger, smaller? <laughs> it's, it's bigger, but not much. I mean, it's right. big as a, like the size of a fishing boat. Uh -huh. 
uh-huh. like a regular fishing boat that you would think of. And like a mast, right. like 20, 30 feet tall. Yeah, I'm sending it to you right now. This awesome. is a uh, folks. I'll put this uh, in the show notes. <laughs> exciting radio. There you go. My wife took the picture from shore. Are these things expensive lessons? It was a Christmas gift. You have no idea. You're going to do more? Oh, yeah. It's a series. Like, I get a certificate so uh-huh. I can do it myself after. Uh-huh. Yeah, is, so that's the point. Is the family's plan for you to buy a boat? No. No? No. So there, <laughs> I live about 500 meters from the Costa Rica Sailing Center. So we're members there. I've been a member since June. Funny, never went out um, sailing, like never got the lessons. Like I said, I, I don't know. I just wanted to hang out at the sailing center, right? There's other perks and stuff that you get too from being a member. But, you know, we were just looking for sort of a place to belong here as mm-hmm. well. Um, but it's nice to actually get sailing. So, so that's the thing. Like the boats are literally 500 meters from here. Interesting. So I can just, I can walk down there once I'm certified, just pay. I think it's like half price for the boats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm you know, to go use them. That's awesome. So you mentioned mm-hmm. uh, you joined a private club. So I, I've, I've been looking at private clubs as well. I can't afford them like you can. Uh, but what, what what kind of benefits come with a private club? Because for, for a lot of these listeners, some of them have been at this for a bit. They can likely afford one. But like what, what's, what, what benefits do you get with your club? Guys, like this is Costa Rica, okay? It's, I'm sure it, it has nothing on some kind of Toronto sailing club. <laughs> it, it, there's no comparison. I think that the, uh, I think that the year membership, the one that I got was like 400 bucks uh-huh. you know? <laughs> for the year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, you get like, there, there's a restaurant there. So you get a percentage off of the restaurant. There's a bunch of attractions around here that you get, uh, you know, discounts on just by being a member, but also there's like chairs on the beach that only the members can use. And, and, uh, you know, a couple of other things, it's not a whole lot. It's like, we, you don't move here to be extravagant. That is for sure. You, you move here to dial down and, and, you know, downsize and just live per vita, man. So, so you don't live in like a 4,000 square foot mansion on the water? No, I live, this is, this is my yard. You can see the, you can see the, the, um, the cement mm-hmm. wall around my house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. You know. so, so folks listening, we are we are sharing this on YouTube as well. So you can have a look there if you want to see. Rob is in his backyard, folks. So if you hear I don't know what animal noises, that's not Rob. Those are I get woken animals. up <laughs> every morning at 5 30 by howler monkeys right here in the trees. Can you uh impersonate what a howler monkey sounds like? <laughs> no, I cannot. I'm sorry. Okay. Look it up. Someone will have to look it up right. on YouTube. The show's over. It's not what I, this is not what I signed up for, Rob. <laughs> so how did you end up in Costa Rica? <laughs> I, I'm just, you signed, you, you wanted me on here because of my impressions. Is that it? Someone, mutual friend of ours promised me that you could do a wonderful howl or a monkey impression. And I'm really disappointed now, but no, no. Actually, no really the story I wanted was. I can only do SpongeBob. <laughs> only do SpongeBob. Another show, another show. Okay. What, what are you doing in Costa Rica? <laughs> Because I um, followed the story, you sold your house. Mm-hmm. Now you're, you're like what six hours away by flight, in a different country. Mm-hmm. You have to pass a couple of countries to get there to Costa Rica. But what? Why? Why the decision to move? Well, we'd been looking for something um, where we could sort of semi-retire in uh, a place that was friendly to expats and also you know, allowed us to keep dual citizenship, which the States doesn't allow you to do. So we looked at Panama, the, the really like, seriously, we only looked at Panama and here. Um, I know some other Canadians who have went to Panama really liked it for it's, you know, just, um, I guess the ease of running a business uh, there, right? So, so we thought about that, but ultimately we came here actually three times before we decided on it. And we found this little town that we're in it is Potrero, the uh, little sort of suburb of it, I guess, if you want to call it that, it's called Surfside where I'm in right now. And um, 
And I, I mean, we traveled around quite a bit. And if I didn't find this exact place, I don't think we'd be living here. So it's just the, just the expat community here, you know, if you're know, going to be honest, is quite important. So there's a lot of Canadians, Americans, you know, um, kids that my kids can play with, not that, and there's no barrier in language gap, right? Like right off the bat. Um, kids are learning Spanish now in school. So they both go to school. They go to different schools. They have good schools around here. And like I said, really, really close to the beach. The town is quaint, something that I never really thought that I would like that much. Um, but, you know, we've, we've been living here permanently for over six months. Pretty much everyone knows who we are. They know the house that we bought. Oh, you're the one that bought Harlan's house, right? So they, 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 it's, it's a quite a tight knit community, but it's, really endearing and cute and there's restaurants everywhere and the beach is right now the beach is happening just all kinds of reasons <laughs> you know all kinds but uh but it's different than the rest there's not a lot of sales the tourism it, like when i'm talking sales um on the beach at a lot of the touristy beaches that you go to there is so many sales people walking up and down constantly up and down the beach asking you if you want to buy cigars or hats or whistles or or wooden bowls or hammocks or necklaces or sunglasses or whatever they're selling right it's got like constant um so so here there's none of that and i really appreciate that kind of when you're on the beach with their family you can just hang out yeah that, that stuff drove me nuts when i was in mexico it yeah kind of, it kind of like ruins a lot of things it is. And I mean, I understand we like, I'll buy something every once in a while. If I go to say Tamarindo where that's going on, cause you know, I want to help out if I can, especially if like whatever they're selling is useful. Right. Um, <clears throat> so if you need sunglasses, okay. I'll buy a pair of sunglasses from mm -hmm. these guys, but, but yeah, like, I mean, it's just too much. If you live there, you know, they're not going to recognize me from the next bald white guy that's sitting in the table next to me, right? No matter how long I've been there. So they're just going to hit me every time. Can't wear a sign around your neck or something? Yeah. Well, what we, what we were doing before is actually if we, we bought one of the whistles, and I'd just bring it with me everywhere and put it on the table. And I thought, okay, that'll, you know, no one will bug us. We already bought one, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. No, that proves you're a buyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, maybe they want two. Look, they got two kids. You probably need another one. <laughs> so you sold your home in, sorry, did you live in Oshawa before? Yeah. So you sold your home in Oshawa. Mm -hmm. and, and then what did you buy? Uh, well, we bought this house. So this is going to be a flip. Um, that's the idea anyways. Mm -hmm. So that the pool behind me wasn't there. Uh, you couldn't even walk in this backyard for a minute without getting eaten alive. Uh, there was just like some, like, I don't know, sand fleas or bugs of some kind that would just eat you if you came out here. So we've taken care of all that, put the pool in, re redone everything. Uh, the house used to be yellow. I think that's a little bit of an upgrade. And then we've renovated everything inside, gutted it. But we're in high season right now and the the prices that places are going for around here are absolutely insane so we could we could rent this house for twenty five hundred dollars a month oh us uh sorry a week excuse me a week <laughs> sorry what, what are peak seasons for rentals so it's anywhere from like say mid-december through till um i may and then what would it cost to get into a property like that that you can rent for 2500 a week it really depends on what somebody wants like this this uh where i am here there's no ocean view it's a dirt road i've got a sushi restaurant directly across the street from me so you like sushi? i can yeah oh heck yeah 
it's actually our favorite restaurant. Like the, the thing that it's kind of annoying that it's across the street. Cause every time I, I go outside, it goes, come over and eat. <laughs> <laughs> You have to um, wear the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, continue. Hip, hip, continue hypnotize continue. me into not liking sushi. So, sorry, you said your place is no ocean view, but still gets uh, twenty five hundred a week. <laughs> yeah, and and I and I'm basing that on another that's just a little bit bigger, and yeah. it's just down the street, and uh, and it's they're they're getting three thousand dollars a week. Uh-huh. Yeah. What, what would it cost you to get to buy something like that? So all in like we've we've done a lot of renovations on this place right so we bought it for 246,000 us um i went over budget for sure i we're probably in around 70,000 us on the renovations so and i you'd be very hard pressed to find something like this was a deal that i knew i could make money on so I mean, if I sold it, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't think I'd, based on the other recent sales in here, I don't think we'd have to sell it for under 500. So it was a deal. I knew that um, we bought it actually when we were, when, after we had left, went back to Canada. Um, and we were in, I think we were in our, you know, two week quarantine and the agent that I was working with here at the time sent this to me and said, I think this is exactly what you're looking for. And we had stayed, our Airbnb was one street over. So I knew the area really, really well. He mm-hmm. did a video walkthrough and we bought it mm-hmm. based off that. So um, there's a couple others, like, I mean, uh, this deal that, uh, that I'm gonna tell you about now, mm-hmm. you know, has been, it's about to go on the market. I think maybe like the first week in January, it's not my listing, but I've known about it for quite a long time. And just because it doesn't have pools, it doesn't have ocean view, things that people think of, things that people get excited about, right? When Mm -hmm. they want to buy an Airbnb in Costa Rica, and then you show it to somebody like pictures and they go, Oh, what are you really, you bought that? Like, Mm -hmm. so it, so there's a lot of money making properties that aren't wow, you know, that the pictures of it aren't going to be looking out through the glass window with the ocean view. But these are real, like I've got a duplex. The one that I'm talking about is a duplex. It's about three blocks away from me. Um, and it can be severed. So you got three bedrooms, three bathrooms on both sides. It needs some redecorating, but everything's within two to three years old like the builds and like i said they got no pools so if you wanted to put pools in you could do that uh the selling price is 360 the asking price is 360 and i think if someone was to sever them which i've already gotten the you know the um basically our lawyer has said yes you can do it because the key is the water for the second once you sever it you have to get a water letter for the second for the other side. So, so what's a water letter? Like you need service? Like basic, yeah. Like if you can't get that letter that they will, that they will connect service, which is quite a, a, a tough thing to get around here right now, because they don't want too much. Um, like the behind me is a fourplex, but you can't build fourplexes on these lots anymore. They won't let you, you can build single family homes only. That sounds a lot like here. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but, the funny thing was, you guys have nimbies there too. <laughs> in size is this. Someone built uh, like a three bedroom, uh, three bedrooms on this side, right? And then on that side, another three bedroom, put a wall down the middle. So essentially, you can sever them. And they're both worth around 300 once you sever it. So purchase price 360, uh, you know, maybe, maybe 50 if you want to put in some little like semi in grounds. And, uh, and then sell off one, keep one, keep both, whatever. Like there's, there's deals like that around here, but I, I just think that they're not, that's kind of like my niche thing. I want to find like value, right? Like a value add, that's a value add property. So yeah. I love finding that kind of thing. Like I can find properties, condos near the beach 
that are going to cash flow on Airbnb, I can find that all day long. Like that's mm-hmm. not a problem. Mm-hmm. But I, what I really like finding is these, these value adds mm-hmm. or flips if someone wanted to just make it a flip, right? I have so many questions. It's, it's, it's more similar <laughs> to what I, what I did in Ontario. Uh-huh. So Wait. I enjoy that. Wait, where, where did you find this town? What's the name of it again? It's called Potre- Potrero. How do you spell that? P O T R E R O. And how did you find it? Um, you know, so we were playing, we were staying in Playa's del Coco. We stayed there for five weeks, uh, a, over, yeah, a year ago. Um, that was our, third visit here um we had went south the last couple Haco, cuepos area um also a tennis like near 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 san jose the capital city Mm -hmm. so like five hours away from here six hours away from here um and done that area so this time we were in plays del coco we stayed there for five weeks we were wanting to see more down this coast Mm -hmm. and uh the, the north side, I should say, rather than this coast. So my wife actually found the Airbnb, Airbnb that I was talking about. And we booked it just based on the Airbnb. And that it was close to um, play a flamingo, which uh, I don't think it's so much of, a, of a, a popular spot as it used to be. I think it used to be more of a popular spot. Now it seems more like retirees, kind of. Like it's not a party spot or anything but there's a lot of condos and stuff up there um and the beach is beautiful but we booked it based on that really and then we discovered sort of just north of there where we are now cool Uh, how far are you from san jose sorry where do you fly in it depends so like if uh, there's direct flights from calgary now i believe like you know all day long um that makes sense. So I mean, it, it really does. Everybody I everybody I meet is from Calgary. Every, every other Canadian that I meet is from Calgary here. Um, really? Yeah. Huh. I'm not kidding. Are they all oil, oil, retired oil industry folks? No, no, no. Young people. Well, not young. Young like me. Young at heart. Mm-hmm. With uh, with growing families. Mm-hmm. So I've met a lot of people from Calgary. Um, so I guess that ma- I guess that makes sense, but uh, we we sorry like the direct last... flight from Calgary to San Jose or different airport? No, to Liberia. So Liberia, Liberia sorry, it, yeah, Liberia is an hour from here, a little bit. Well, yeah, a little bit less. An hour to like okay, an hour drive from Liberia. What do you do with all your notes? Show notes. Oh, okay. You put all of this in the show notes? No. Okay. Figure out what time I'm going to put in the show notes. You have more show notes than I do, I think. <laughs> I don't write any. I don't, I don't write any of my show notes. Uh, I I I, um, I forget how you do it. You ask your guests to prepare their write ups. I usually write mine. <laughs> I introduce my own guests. The well, way the I only want thing to. the only thing that I do is really is like I I want to make sure that we don't miss any topics they want to hit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so that's what I'll ask, you know, what are, what is important for us to focus on here Uh with you? Right. So they can talk about what they're passionate about. I mean, I guess that's going to happen anyways. If you just go free form like this, that's what people are going to do. That's why I asked the question, uh, like what's keeping you busy, right? Yeah. Because whatever topic you're in mind, you're going to probably mention first. (laughs) Like sitting in your backyard. How warm is it over there? It is pretty darn hot here. I was just thinking, I, it's got to be like 30. I'm, su- I'm sweating. Oh, okay. so, I'm sweating my butt off. So it's plus 30? And mm-hmm. you're, in the, you're in the direct sun right now. <laughs> yeah, I am. Good good decision. <laughs> uh, selfish question. How far north are you from Halco? Because James Mag, James MBM, Moneybags Mags, he just flew down to uh, San Jose. And now he's on his way to, to Halco. Uh, he's that's in where, Halco right now? That's where his place is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, we're, it's like, five and a half or six hours to get to Haka. That's pretty serious. Okay. Yeah. So, so you had some experience with the, with the town, with the town 
And then what's the experience like with the city? Um, what? Because I've I know a couple people who've uh, who are at least exploring Hako, and a lot of people were a lot of Canadians I know were in Hako. It seems the divide for people um, when people were taking off when when restrictions were at their greatest here. Like I swear, like almost half the people were in Costa Rica, the other half were in Florida. Um, yet yeah, you mentioned it's it's you can't keep your dual citizenship uh, while in uh, in the U.S. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what about your OHIP flow, for example? What about your your health insurance? Do you not need you, to be part in the country for part of it to you do. keep it going? Yeah, yeah, you do. So you you plan on coming back to visit? <laughs> no, no. Or just gonna do away with your OHIP? Yeah. Okay. So what what do you do there then? You buy private health insurance? Yeah. Yeah, we got to buy private health insurance through someone local. Working on the residency, uh, I'm I'm through a local company now. Uh, all five oh six. Yeah, I got all my insurance through a company called All Five Hundred Six. I, I mean, that's just who I'm with. It's not an endorsement. I don't know either way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but that's who we're with uh -huh. for all of our insurance. So, um, but I was with a different company right up until because every three months we've had to leave, not because. So, like, what a lot of people do to avoid, you know, they'll just do a border run to Nicaragua and come back. Right. And so you, you can only stay in the country for 90 days and then you have to leave and come back. So, um, so our, with our residency in process, you don't have to do that, but if you want to continue driving, you have to do that. So we've had to do it anyway. So, so, you know, we've had to renew our insurance every time. And then this time I just switched to a Costa Rican company. What are the benefits of residency being uh, going through before it? Just not having to leave. That's that's pretty much it. I mean, I guess I can. I've been having one heck of a time trying to renew my license. Um, driver's license? Yeah. Real estate license. Yeah. No driver's license. So my Ontario driver's license. Mm hmm. I've been trying to renew it, but I've just been having like such a hassle. No one has the power to help me because um, it expires in January, coming up really soon. And they, it won't renew online for whatever reason. I did my health card and then I did, I went to do the driver's license and it just says, please come into a service Ontario. I'm like, I can't. Mm. It doesn't matter who you talk to nobody has the power to help you <clears throat> i will tell you that if you're yeah. coming and plan on doing any kind of an extended stay make sure all of your documents are updated you know or at least you're able to do it from here for because for whatever reason and i i don't nobody has an answer why i can't mm -hmm. renew it online they just go oh if it says to come in then you got to come in like right. well can you put me on the phone with someone who can, you know, help me remotely? Oh no, we're just an information center. We don't have no, we don't have that. I can tell you what to do. I just did come into service Ontario. So hopefully, hopefully among our 16, 17 listeners, someone works at the MTO. I can help out Rob and let him know why. Yes. I remember for a high level MTO, please take care of that. I, I imagine even a low level would actually know the actual reason why. Um, I remember one time I had to, uh, they needed a new picture of me. That's why they forced me to come in. That's why they mm -hmm. wouldn't let me renew over online or over, over mail. I don't know if that's your case. No, because I like I, I only got my license three years ago. Anyway, it's a, it's a weird, I don't, and no one can explain that either. Hmm. Complicated. So make sure your documents are in order. And what else? What, what, what other... What were some of the other benefits of moving to Costa Rica over other places? So, yeah, that's two different questions, right? Like moving to Costa Rica, what are the benefits of residency? And what are the benefits of moving here? I guess kind of, it, it really is two different questions, right? Uh, but why does it keep coming up on people's top list of places to go? Other than like all the, like it's more affordable, it seems, it's lifestyle, it's better weather. How's, yeah. how's like taxes handled or... <clears throat> 
I know you don't have a military. <laughs> I don't know if that's a reason why you want to move there. <laughs> well, I mean, we only moved here in June of last year, so I don't really know only. how taxes. Well, yeah, but but you know what I mean. Like, so I haven't handled taxes on on that side yet. Um, I would imagine probably like mid January, I'm gonna have to start worrying about that. You're gonna hire a local uh, accountant. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're gonna have to hire a local accountant. <clears throat> I'm sure that'd be very beneficial. I'm sure it'd be hard to find a law one here in Canada that would understand how to do it. <laughs> uh, but, I, I don't know, man. Like, I guess just being allowed, to, being allowed to stay here and not having to do the back and forth. Like, I want to do it, but there, you know, when the restrictions start to lift and get better, I'd love to come back and forth. But it's just, you know, when when everything is so difficult. Like, I was, I think, I don't know if it was Elizabeth's podcast that me and you were both on the other day, it's like one of the biggest things I miss is being able to do those house tours, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like I, I love doing that. I love showing investors how they could, you know, do the highest and best use on whatever property we were showing them. So yeah, it, it's just, it's just that now that I've sort of established myself as an agent here, I'm doing okay with that. Plus people are actually kind of interested. You know, I get a lot of Canadians reaching out um, at, for investment side of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So that does make it fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to do it here as an agent and still be licensed in Ontario. I made sure that I, that all of that worked out. So that was another key thing, right. I'm able to keep working there with my team mm -hmm. and still work here. So, I mean, if, if someone had said no, um, in Panama, one of the other things is you have to live there for, no, oh, I think it's two years before you're allowed to work Damn. as an agent. So, so that doesn't, that didn't really make sense. Like I could come and start working here right away as an agent. There's a couple of things you have to do. You have to register with certain organizations and that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Have mm -hmm. to have your corporation up. And so, you know, couldn't do it right away, but it wasn't it wasn't because they had some restriction that you needed to, you couldn't work in the first two years. Mm -hmm. So before we start <clears throat> recording, you mentioned that some people uh, <laughs> in Costa Rica are practicing in real estate, but aren't licensed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're seeing that a lot. Actually, the other so they day, actually pose as agents. <laughs> like, do they have like for sale signs with their with their picture on it. <laughs> yeah, no, everybody knows. Everybody knows, but they've just got access, and they've never bothered to, you know, to mm. get any kind of certification, right? That'd be nice. Any kind of license. So, um, and the other thing that people do is misrepresent other people's listings as their own. Okay. Th that happens quite a bit here. Like, for example, I'm on a, a shared uh, RE chat on WhatsApp with a lot of the agents around here. And one of them just posted like, hey, look at this website. Like this person literally took every single one of my listings, just copied and pasted them into their site. So, um, so there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. We've got people around here that are working on a centralized MLS system because that's something else we don't have. So if you, if you want to know all the condos, uh, ocean view condos two bedrooms um, in the area i have to go to all the different websites of all the different real estate companies and dig through them to find them for you and i can't put it on a drip i gotta do it every other day or whatever I mean, see if there's new ones there's no central anything no well the, there is a centralized mls system but it's not the same like all the listings go through it they need mm -hmm. to be pushed through MLS to be to be posted, but they're only posted on your own website. So whatever brokerage you're with, that's the only that's that's really the only place they go. There's other ones like Point Two Homes that might have it on their website, but they're like almost everything's outdated. So I would say ninety percent of the stuff you'll see on a site like that is already sold. Wow, it's it's pretty difficult. Yeah, it's different. When I, when I started as a realtor, it was pretty clean. <laughs> like, I don't know what year you guys are in in terms of real estate technology. There's people working and like going to, going to some big meetings in San Jose to try and get things straightened out because it would be beneficial for everybody and working on like getting people to be licensed, right? So it's not such a, 
wild south for lack of a better term I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's yeah that's that's a recipe for disaster people think people are gonna get hurt like financially emotionally you know we, we like real estates you know we were talking about real estate agents so i won't say what was shared mostly negative by me but like before we were recording but there needs to be regulation around this in- industry there, there needs to be accountability because if someone's not licensed what accountability is there right there's no regulatory body to come down on someone when they're, when they're doing bad things to bad to to good people so that's a shame yeah how are the kids adjusting they love it yeah they absolutely love it I mean, they, they go to different schools. My kids have different needs. So they go to different schools. One of them, one of them, he, my younger one just wants to learn in a, you know, in a get up and move atmosphere. Right. I know a lot of kids do, but luckily there is a place here for him like that. So, um, so he goes to that school. My older son goes to another one, which is like more traditional, like what, you know, you'd get in Ontario, go in, sit at the desk all day, learn, do PE for a certain amount of time. Um, but they absolutely love it. They, I mean, my son, my, my youngest has been off since December 4th. And like the kids don't want to be out of school. They want to be in school. Right. It's a, it's, I mean, my, my oldest always wanted to be in school. But when, when my younger son comes home and says he, he loves school and wants to go back, that's a huge huge thing Mm -hmm. is this public or is this private no it's private yeah is it pricey uh i I don't i don't have any frame of reference i never sent them to a private school before we left so i didn't look and see how much they were but it's a it's a little it's it's somewhere around 600 us each a month that's not bad uh, like the big brand ones here, the like the well-known ones, they're usually, you know, I think the cheapest might be sixteen thousand a year. Yeah. And, and then a lot of them yeah. are over twenty. Yeah. I, I'm just glad, like like I say, I'm just glad that we found something for my youngest because he, the public school system he didn't like him and he didn't like the public school system. So I'm really glad that we could find him something where he fits in. No, what a surprise that private industry service <laughs> a sector that had need. Yeah, I guess you're right. We that never looked at like, yeah. that entrepreneurs found a solution for a certain segment of the population. What do you true, know? True. We didn't need government to do it for us. <laughs> but they love it. And there, there are so many kids here running around. That was another thing. Like the first night we got here um the kid my kids hadn't seen another kid in five weeks like there's no kids in coco mm-hmm. right and we'd been mm-hmm. there for five weeks and yeah you can like the beach and and the atmosphere and everything you know the lifestyle was more of a vacation at that time mm-hmm. um but then when we got here and there was kids everywhere like down at the sailing center when we went there the first time there was kids playing soccer in the like little courtyard Mm-hmm. And my kids' jaws just drop wide open, I'm like other people our age, you know. So ever since then, that that was something that sort of drew us to the area as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so inquiries come from Canadians. What is it mostly surrounding? Are they looking for value add job, uh, value add properties, or are they looking for? Apparently not. <laughs> yeah, because that's work. <laughs> apparently not well it's they don't have boots on ground like you do (laughs) well i am boots on ground exactly it's it's uh it's it's because it's so you know capital intensive right it's very capital intensive you don't you don't have the mortgage options there's basically cash you can you can a lot of sellers are open to seller financing but it's like usually maybe three to maybe five years financing um you know, the rates aren't bad though, actually, like it's usually like five, 6%. Um, yeah, it's not bad, but the, the terms are so short, right? Like five, six years or sorry, like three to five years tops mm-hmm. is really all that I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Most want like one to two. So unless you've got, 
you know, some reason why you've got money coming to you in a year to pay off the other half. Cause usually they'll want 50% down, you know, you're still basically coming up with a lot of cash. So what are people, are you doing deals then for clients back home? Like here Yeah. or at home? Uh, that's funny you say here. <laughs> In Potrero, are you doing, are you helping people buy investment property there? Yeah. Yeah. And what, what's their, what's most interesting, what are most people interested in? Condos. Yeah. High rise? Ocean view condos that are Airbnb. What do the numbers yeah. like look on, look like on those? It depends, but you're probably in around 300 to 400 area. Um, typically that'll get you a really, really spacious three uh, bedroom, you know, depending on the area, um, ocean view, three bathrooms, you know, just um, really nice, open, spacious, luxurious. The, like, I mean, so the prices are good. It's just that you got to buy it in cash. And US dollars. US dollars. They don't have a local currency? <laughs> yeah, they do. Nothing, yeah. no business is done in it? <laughs> well, I mean, if you go into a store and give them American money, you get change back in local currency. I, I use the local currency mostly, but... You know, if I was going to use it right now, it wouldn't make sense to anybody listening. Right, right. Got it. Right. And then what kind of, uh, what kind of in, uh, revenue do these things generate in, in like a year? Um, I mean, because you've got to take into consideration that, you know, you're probably only going to rent for, uh, we start our pro was with like 12 weeks rentable, mm -hmm. rented uh, period of time. I could send you one. Cool. I'll post in the show notes. You're putting me on the spot though, man, because it depends. Like it depends on where it is. It depends on what it is. I know. Um, what, what if it's, I'm just looking for a vanilla investment. Yeah. <laughs> and, and these places, they have like full amenities, indoor pool, outdoor pool, concierge, gyms. Yeah, like most of them will have a gym. Uh, most of them have a pool, no indoor pool, just an outdoor pool. One or, right. Most of the time, there's usually two or three in the complex. But you'll, you'll, nice. I mean, you're going to probably just stick to the one that's in front of your building, right? Um, uh, like, no concierge, no, not really. Interesting. And then there'd be like, um, like there'll be HOA fees attached to them and they can, they can vary so much from place to place. So you're looking at maybe you can, you can be anywhere from like $200 up to like $800. It just depends. Wow. <clears throat> if the corporation spent a lot of money or they're trying to, you know, turn the place around from a bad previous owner or something, they could be quite high. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, tell us about like the most recent condo, that you, you transacted on well i mean it's it's an un, it's unattainable again <laughs> it'll never happen again that's why i don't like talking about it it's like talking about something i did two years ago to be honest like in ontario because you just won't find it again um the most what, recent one i what 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 can someone find what can someone find that you'd recommend that's just what i told you anywhere from three to four hundred um like so for example, there's, there's another one coming up that <clears throat> will hopefully be gone. Cause I've already told somebody about it, but it's a, uh, it's a three bedroom, like luxury condo in Playa Ocotal, which is about half an hour North of me. And uh, someone has stopped paying their making their payments on it. So this is about there, there's one that's identical listed right now for uh, 360, I believe it is. And this one can be gotten for around 300. It's identical and it's fully furnished. But just because this would be something that someone could step into and take over so they mm -hmm. can pick it up for what's owed, right? 
So like, I love finding stuff like that for people, mm -hmm. but that kind of stuff doesn't come up very often. But the other numbers that I told you are all the time. You know, that, that one, like I said, like that one, if it was on the market, it'd be, I don't know, 370 to 400. Uh, you mentioned uh, 12 weeks rentable. What, what would the what would the weekly rent uh, range from on a condo like one of these? So one of those would probably be anywhere from twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred in the three three hundred thousand to four hundred thousand dollar purchase price range. Right. Per week. Yeah. In high season. Yeah, yeah. For roughly twelve weeks. So then basically yeah. forty weeks of vacancy was what people should budget for. Something like that. Yeah, on the first year. And then we've got a like a like it, it sort of slides up from there, right? Referrals and repeat customers and that kind of thing. Oh, okay. So what would like the year five picture look like then? If from going from year one, 12 weeks. <laughs> I can't remember what the metric was for that, Erwin. Jesus. See, I don't, I don't get invited on podcasts like you do. This is why. <laughs> Let me look it up. Let me see what we had used. It's funny you mentioned it because I, I had some questions for you for like new realtors, for example. Because like, for example, in my experience, uh, a realtor, usually around year three, that they're so busy with referrals that they're not taking on new business. Well, my, like, so what are you asking? This brought up a random example, <laughs> but you said you, you were saying uh, 12 weeks rentable would be sort of the expectation in the first year. And you think that climbs as you get referrals and repeat business. Yeah. Like that's the way. So I've sort of learned this right from the agents around here. Mm -hmm. I just, I can't remember what the numbers went like year two, year three, year four, right off the bat here. And I just, I can't find the pro formers right now. So I'm not even going to bother to try because my computer's just lagging and spinning. I try and Zoom does that. <laughs> <clears throat> Zoom, but, Zoom kills my processing speed. Send it to me later. I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. But I mean, I think we're ultra realistic on the first year with 12 weeks, right? And, and it doesn't go up too much. I think it goes to like 15, you know, then like 18. Like it's small increments. It, mm -hmm. doesn't, it doesn't go, oh, the next year you're doing like 30. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't do anything like that. I just can't remember what it does exactly. And James, like James has been in Hako for quite some time now, and he still doesn't have a mortgage on it. So I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I personally don't know anyone who has mortgages on any other property in Costa Rica. Is that something that people can build towards? No, I don't think so. I mean, if you got residency and you could prove income, then you could probably go to the bank and get a mortgage. But right. other than that, that's pretty much i mean you, you could put a private you could put private money on it like you can put a private loan on it right right but i don't think that would make much sense i mean you could use your you could use your if you were sneaky about it you could use your line of credit right well is there a problem with people using the line of credit i thought you can use the line of credit on anything i don't know man i'm hearing all kinds of lexus oh yeah but it, where is the lexus located <laughs> It's a depreciating asset. I don't care where it is. <laughs> My point is, though, that I believe once I've heard some stories about there being issues of where the money is going. That's all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because I know people who've used personal line of credits to buy property in Florida. Yeah. 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 It shouldn't be a problem. I'm just saying that maybe recently it's become a problem. What if once someone wants to use Bitcoin? I'm just kidding. You don't want the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's busier? Your business uh, in Potrero or back home in uh, in Durham region? My business in Durham and, and Peterborough is definitely still more busy. Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing like, virtual showings? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're doing uh, virtual tours. We've got... So a lot of our clients who we know what they're looking for, James is going out and he's doing like um, video walkthroughs and we're just sending them privately to those clients who are looking for, you know, those, those type of properties. So, I mean, and, and as far as like investments go, being able to leverage the investment, like in the traditional sense that we all know, um, that still, you know, makes more sense. Uh, you, you come here and you do this, because you want to come here and use the property, 
mm -hmm. uh, you know, for two or three weeks out of the year, mm -hmm. right? And make the money off it in the meantime, because it does. But I mean, your ROI is definitely going to be a little bit lower, I would say, right? Than, than your traditional buy, fix, refi in Canada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and people understand it more. So we're still working with uh, a lot of clients on on student rentals and uh, and <laughs> and, uh, and 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 um, and adding second suites as well. Are you, uh, is there any headway on um, third suites yet? Garden yeah. suites. Yep. Yep. There's the, there in Peterborough. They're allowing garden suites now. As the third or the second? That's a good question. I think it's only as the second right now. Yeah. 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 Which, kind of you know, when, when it comes to it making sense financially to do that, there's very rare occasion where it would. It would almost be if somebody owned a property for like, you know, 10 years, they wanted to add a second suite and then they could refi it. That might make sense. Like say they didn't have a basement. Right, mm -hmm. that worked or the regulations but they mm -hmm. they found that the garden suite would work i'd say that's it, that's more something that someone like them would look at do you have any garden suites so no. far in your clients i don't think so yeah it's still slow uh i guess east and west it's still slow in the west too uh, i have a client who's going through for minor variants for it fingers crossed he gets he gets it He's got a big lot though. So and I think it's a corner as well. So he's got a better chance than anybody else of getting, getting it approved, mm -hmm. but it's, it's still a ways from being like a mainstream. Right. Um, like he's gotta, he's gotta be the squeaky wheel to get yeah, it done. Yeah. yeah. He's pioneering the way for everybody else. Yeah. It's funny. Cause I read an article uh, this week, just to, to summarizing all of the high rise developments going on in Hamilton. And it seems like it's, they're, uh, it seems the city's quite cooperative and, and, and happy to have them. I almost wonder, like, and I wouldn't be surprised, I'm surprised that I didn't think this before, but I think the cities prefer the big developers over us small developers because, yeah. uh, well, they can do volume with a 30 story building versus like you and I need to go through a permit process to add one suite at a time, right? Versus they can add, you know, they can. I'm sure it's more work, but they can process paperwork and approve six, six, seven, 600, 900 new units. Right. Yeah. But I mean, I guess that, I guess, I guess that would only matter to the, the budget planning committee really like doesn't matter to the planners themselves. I wouldn't say they're just still doing their work. But then the budget planners, people, they need to, they don't they allocate resources to the planners for the for the high rises and not for people for so if they go on pop so, like you and I. Yeah, but I mean, you got to be somewhat realistic. They can't just go to their their council and say, you know what, if we just stopped all of these, we'd save a lot of money. Our city would go <laughs> our city would go down. But I mean, city hall, look how much money we'd save. Mm -hmm. We could fire we could fire Irwin down in planning. That would be great. Look at look at we'd save like. His salary right there every year. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, uh, it's like the experience that I'm seeing on the ground is such more, so much more painful than it seems to be for the for the large developers in Hamilton. They usually have very positive things to say about working with the city. Yeah, it's, it's hard to find. I mean, I guess it, <laughs> from the small. See, I've found the city of Peterborough, like the city of Peterborough, the city of uh, Oshawa, very easy to yeah. work with. Yeah, because they have the regulations laid out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so, you know, you just play within their, within their parameters and, right. and it seems to be no problem. There's no well, terrible someone, cities to work with in Durham region, like Pickering or something like that. I don't if, know. I mean, we, we haven't really done too, too many secondary suites in Pickering, but mm -hmm. you know, Whitby, Whitby is a little more difficult. Yeah. See, yeah. Whitby's a little more difficult and like some places like, um, like just east of uh, Oshawa in like Bowmanville, they'll change, they'll change what they're looking for. Yeah, see, that's they'll painful. The regulations all the time. Yeah, that's difficult as an investor, as a business owner to operate in that environment. Yeah, you know, like sometimes, so for example, like I remember there was a while where they wanted uh, separate HVAC systems for both units. Mm. 
expensive. Yeah. They had to rerun all the ducting. Yeah. yeah. And then they wanted uh, the fire separation in the duct work as well. So okay. it, yeah, it was, it was painful for a while. And then I think a bunch of people complained and they said, okay, maybe we're going a little too far. They dialed it back a bit. Crazy. Yeah, see what I mean? It can be painful. It's painful in mm -hmm. places. Then people don't go invest there. True. Right? Like the West side, for example, like Niagara region, St. Catharines is really difficult, right? <laughs> but the, the, the town or the city of Welland, they're very progressive and open. So like all the investors are there. <laughs> It's more it's affordable kind of, right now though too i know but the neighboring cities and those towns are no dot not that different in terms of affordability it's just yeah. it's diff they're difficult to work with like yeah. thorold is really right next to welland right okay. very big difference in how those, those cities operate but yeah that's why localized knowledge is always important and then so yeah no plans to come back eh? <laughs> not right now this? my yeah my wife doesn't want to go back either my wife hates winter. I I think winter's winter's underrated how much it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll share I'll my own example. Like I, I I think last year I counted. I probably had three decent slip and falls. Oh right? really? Slip on ice and fall. And just because I'm sturdy and I'm not that old and I'm, I'm uh, I didn't really get hurt that badly. But for anyone 10 years older than me and not in shape, those would probably be pretty significant falls. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And I remember, like, I don't know when it was, but it wasn't that long ago where I learned how to fall and learned how to not fall. It was a very interesting shift. I think all of a sudden, because I, I used to have some really bad ones and get hurt. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then there seemed to be something that happened where all of a sudden I didn't get hurt as much. How do you fall? And I you just like Teaches learn. This. Yeah. Well, I mean, ask Tony Hawk. Right. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> no, it's just a way to like you know, just like turn your body or whatever, uh -huh. go with the momentum, whatever it is. Like you just like I don't know, somehow grab onto it intuitively at some point in your life. I think. So you learn from experience, or you like watch the YouTube on from Tony? Hawk? Oh God, it must have been experience. No, I don't. Uh... <laughs> Cause I felt I fell skiing. I, fell I told skating. you earlier. I learned everything from experience. So my point about slip and falls is like, you don't have slip and falls where you live. <laughs> There's no ice. <laughs> well, it's slippery around some of these pools sometimes. <laughs> I don't know if you're serious or not. <laughs> well, it can be, I guess. It's a, it's a tough, it's a rough problem to have. Maybe, maybe drink less when you're walking around the pool. <laughs> Maybe oh. drink more. That's that's another way it doesn't hurt as much. <laughs> so I, there's two other two other directions I want to go. Um, I want to ask you about podcasting, and I've had a lot of people interested in becoming agents reach out. Uh, let's do with podcasting. Let's start with podcasting. Uh, what year did you start again? 2014. Yeah, 2014 January. How much has it been, meant to your business? Uh, I think it's been like indispensable, you know, um, like, I don't know. I, I, I've never, when I became an agent, so we didn't start it because we were agents, mm -hmm. right. Looking to drum up business. We just started it so we could talk to people, mm -hmm. people as investors. Um, I had no intention of becoming an agent when we started it. I believe it was three years, three years in before I became an agent. So, so I mean, at that point, just the shift with people understanding what we could offer as agents before they even called mm -hmm. was, you know, is priceless really, because I've never had, I've never done a cold call, never, you know, um, despite many coaches telling me I need to do cold calls, never done it. Um, and, and so it, it just like everyone that's called all of the clients that I've ended up working with, and we've done really well, um, have been people who have called me, reached out to me and said, I know what you're doing, you know, and, I, and we're ready to do it. 
-hmm. we're ready to do like a student rental or a buy fix refi right and we hear about your tours and so we'd like to come and check it out mm -hmm. so and the reason they hear about them is because a lot of times a lot of my clients are people that they say wow you know i feel like i know you because we've heard so many of the shows and you got us in interested in doing this so i mean it's been priceless as far as that goes absolutely priceless mm -hmm. you know and then learning from everybody i guess on top of that you know how to be a better investor myself right but i mean i i assume that's what you were talking about was the agent side of the business uh sorry i didn't mean to influence the decision making uh on influencing your answer it's just uh I, I just have a lot of new agents reaching out to me or people interested in becoming agents uh so you're because your podcast is real estate investing really um based in real estate investing mm -hmm. uh, so i'll start with the, my next question would be uh if you could do it all again what would you do differently if there if there's anything you'd do differently oh man that's a good question we can come back well, to that I, one. I, I suppose <laughs> i suppose i would take it a little more seriously like at first and and for the longest and for the longest time it was more just something like it was really wanting to talk to people and wanting uh you know to share what they've done with other people but more if i can be honest more just so i could talk to them myself mm -hmm. you know in the beginning i didn't think anyone was going to hear it. it it actually ended up you know growing into something pretty good but I would say I would take it a little more seriously from the beginning, you know, um, not put it, not, I would never put it off until it was perfect, but I think once it was established, I would have tried to, tried to turn it into a business a little bit quicker. And, and all, and, and I will say like, we haven't really done that but we're sort of in the process of doing that now and and i do want to keep it very focused i think that that's one of the things that that helped us so i'll tell you one of the things i wouldn't change is we have a very heavy focus on whether or not the information that somebody is supplying us can be used 100% by Canadians without like some kind of, you know, oh, it's not 401k, you know, it, it, like I don't want any kind of translating involved, right? Like it's got to be Canadian content. So we, I, I've probably had double as many people as we accept to come on that we've turned away simply because i'll ask them the question do you have any canadian specific content that you can share and usually they don't even write back right? that's a good but, one yeah i actually don't know what so, to do with the, with the American, all these americans who reach out <laughs> yeah well i mean they might have good they might have good information i'm sure they do mm -hmm. they've gotten to where they are because because they've done something right but i just think that our show has been successful because we decided to stay razor focused on Canadian specific content. So I have a general podcasting question for you. If someone's starting a business, should they start a podcast? This could be new agents. It could be, I don't know, carpenter, a private lender, a flipper, a wholesaler. Well, I mean, there's two things, right? I would say, I would say if they're confident that they can provide information, then they should do it. Then they should do it. If they're doing it just to hear their own voice and they're actually sort of talking in circles and not really sharing any new information, I mean, people can learn not to do that, but um, I think it's in, important to make sure that the content is valuable right just make sure because very quickly someone will go oh, i'm not learning anything I, like i'm not going to listen to this right um so if they can do that 
and be somewhat entertaining at the same time that that's a good mix and just somewhat you don't have to you know obviously I, i'm no howie mandel i don't know but you know i'm no joe rogan <laughs> he's a comedian it's not fair yeah i mean that guy can talk for like 10 hours i, know, I like it three i like i like it best when when people talk like when we get on there we don't even have to ask the questions i like sometimes uh, I'll, I'll be, we'll be done the we'll be done the show and I'll go great we skipped questions you know five six seven because you just answered them while you were talking on and I don't mind that because you know it's great you just sit back and learn from them and it rolls right it rolls nicely so um, so I like it but you know if if you can if you can interject with little points of interest or something entertaining then that's good too speaking of go ahead well i was gonna say like it's not gonna be great when you start right Uh, i i i don't think i would listen to not that i'm gonna do this but i don't think i would listen to the first couple shows that we did and think they were fantastic or anything but not that I really listen to any of them and think they're fantastic, but they, they learned, they got a better flow. You know, they got a better flow as we went on and we learned how to tighten up on what we were saying, get rid of the ums and ahs and that kind of thing. So I would say if you want to though, just do it and make sure you don't wait until it's perfect. But I, how, who am I to say whether someone should start one or not? I, I don't know. I mean, if they want to, they should. I guess. Yeah, I would say even if they don't want to, they should. <laughs> well, if you don't want to when you do it, I, I just I feel like you know there there could be an element of of that coming through uh-huh. the microphone. Mm-hmm. So if you don't want to, I'd say find another media outlet that you do want to do, and you might be more successful at that. I, I understand your point though. Like it doesn't, it's not, it's certainly not going to hurt them. No, it won't hurt them. Yeah. Uh, but to me, it's like real estate investing. There's things I'd rather be doing. Like, like doing the deal and renovating and first tenant it, first tenanting it, it's pretty solid. But then when stuff doesn't go well, that's not so fun. Still got to do it though. <laughs> right? When why didn't you share like this news with late? everybody sooner, Erwin? Sorry? I said, why didn't you share this news with everybody sooner? I've, 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 I've repeated this a couple times on my show. I know you don't listen to it, so <laughs> I think it's, uh, uh, I think a bit of healthy ignorance is, is required to do anything. Right. Uh, a wonderful yeah. example is a uh, wonderful example is Luke and uh, Michael Ryrot. Right. Uh, when, when Michael was on the show, uh, like they keep taking huge steps in their pro and what they're in their next project. Yeah. Right? From doing like, uh, from doing like McMaster student rentals to doing like a buy 50 lot, 50 foot lot, 50 foot frontage, and then tear down the house and sever it and build two new houses. Right. From that to buying like a church and converting it into condos and, and well, as, as well as building a townhouse complex on it and then building like 30 story high rises. Right. They don't have all the answers and they'll, they'll really admit that they don't have all the answers at the, at that time, but they believe right. that they will get there. Yeah. Right. So it's not different from the beginning investor. I, I, I defy someone to, you know, give the answer to any question, yeah. like, sorry, to every question that somebody has that I defy any expert to give the answer to any question that somebody has, like, there's going to be, you know, a question they can't answer but they can go find it Mm -hmm. pretty easily. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. That's why I told one of my first clients, one of my first clients, like, um, she, she, we, we both, both agreed. We didn't have all the answers, but then I said to her within three phone calls, do you not think we can find the answer? Right. Yeah. (laughs) Like Rob within three phone calls, is there anything you can't get the answer to related to real estate? Probably very little. You're right. I mean, yeah, if it's like if it's multifamily, you know the three people to call. Yeah. Right? Whatever. Even if it's the yeah. multifamily lawyer within three phone calls, you can probably get it. <laughs> right? 
so again like that's what i mean like it's okay to not have all the answers and the and someone starting a podcast will be no different what mic do i need where am i going to host it there's all these hosting sites which one's the best <laughs> right. right doesn't matter just pick one they're all pretty good <laughs> right they all it's do like the, the same thing yeah they all do the same thing it's like it's like smartphones they're all relatively pretty good <laughs> like cars these days cars these days are fantastic Right. They're better than ever. They're not that far apart. So uh, we're running out of time. Apologies, Rob. I know you need to get back to sunbathing. <laughs> I'm cooking out here, man. I don't think I'm going to be in the sun too much. You don't have an umbrella? This. What's up? Man? I have it. The umbrella's in the front yard. I, I keep meaning to bring it back here. You're going to burn tomorrow. Okay. Oh, I'm going to be dead tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> any advice for anyone becoming a real estate agent i don't know why i've been getting that question a lot new agents and and people going through for the courses or trying to decide to do the courses this is a tough one because i'm really specialized as an agent mm -hmm. right like i'm not a typical agent so if you ask like, you're going to get a radically different answer to mm -hmm. uh from someone who sells like condos downtown mm -hmm. right but just focus I mean, on investors because that seems to be most where most people are coming from. I want to help other investors. Um, I mean, specialize, like learn your area, learn the regulations. I think that's the biggest thing because if I can walk into a house and know within five minutes, if they can do what they want to do with it, that's very, very helpful. Right? Like a lot of agents won't know that. Like, can I do a secondary suite in this house? I don't know. I don't know what the regulations are. I don't know if you can, I don't know, you know, any, any of the information. Whereas like, if you know your area very, very well, you can say, yeah, we've got the front of jet. We've got the ceiling height. Yeah. Look at, uh, you know, these windows, they may not work. We got to change them out, but we can do that. No problem. Um, you know, the driveway, is it the right size for the regulations for whatever that city is? So, if you know, if you specialize, I think that that, that would be, if you're gonna be an investor agent, um, something good to do. That's pretty good advice. I know too many agents who try to, who, I, you know, I've worked with eight, before I was an agent myself, I worked with agents who, who said they worked with investors and they wouldn't be able to answer any of my questions. Like, what would the rent be? <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine that a client asking you what would the rent be and you wouldn't know <laughs> yeah i'm not quite sure what the rent would be on that one i don't like doing pro formas up that's one thing i like i'll do it here because that's mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. but i don't like doing pro formas for uh for clients in in ontario i, I usually say like you know here's a template you fill it in because mm -hmm. I don't know what numbers you want to use. I don't mm -hmm. know if you're going to do property management yourself. I don't know if you're going to cut the grass yourself. Like you fill it in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You decide what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I, that's been actually another, like I've seen pro formas from other agents and I've talked to other clients who've went out and got like house tours with other agents in the area. And, you know, they'll be like, look at this. Like they didn't put this in, they didn't put that in. Like, look at this pro forma. Of mm -hmm. course, the numbers look good. They didn't. They didn't take any of this into account. So, so I'm just like, I'm not. So I'm not going to do that for you. Mm -hmm. Just pick mine apart too. Mm -hmm. Learn to do it yourself, mm -hmm. right? Or similar. We'll give our clients the rent. Yeah. And we'll tell them what the blanks are. Oh yeah. If they ask me any questions about yeah. like, what do you think about this, then I can yeah. give them my opinion. But, yeah, do you want to know like a property management rate is? Yeah, we can mm. gladly give it to you and we can give mm. you the referral as well. Uh, you want our estimates on what maintenance costs will be or what the vacancy will be? We'll gladly give it to you, right? But we don't fill it out for them. I think mm. it's, uh, it's, it sets the wrong expectation, I think. And like we just said, uh, you and I could probably pick most of them apart, the ones that get email blasted out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go, wholesale deals much money, included <laughs> why why should i work with you look how much money i can make if i go buy this place <laughs> go for it like all right go buy that place go buy that place <laughs> uh, Rose, mike rosehart said the most brilliant thing a couple months ago he, he mentioned on the stories how 
uh, hope Mike doesn't mind me sharing. He put it on his own stories, but he was saying how uh, there were better deals on MLS than from wholesalers. <laughs> At the oh, time. I suppose sometimes time. that might have been the case. <laughs> Someday in point in time, that could have been the case, right? Yeah. Well, when it's an unregulated, uh, when it's an unregulated industry, wholesaling, then what do you expect, right? Well, the problem with wholesaling now is they're doing, they're doing, they're they're doing the whole uh, feeding frenzy thing, just like, just like holding back offers for a week. You know, hey, anyone that wants to see it, come down Saturday. And then put in your best offer. Yeah, so yeah. they got all the people competing for those places too. Yeah. <clears throat> and they capture all the upside versus when we as agents do it, it's for the benefit of our seller. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We get all the hate. <laughs> That's true. Rob, I need you get, you get some shade. Thanks so much for doing this. Okay. Hope I can trouble you for a selfie. I haven't done this before, how, but how do we do it? I don't know. You know, like green this. screen yourself in there? No. Like do some gang sing yeah. hand signals or something. Be cool. Let be young and hip. We're young and hip. We don't slip and fall. <laughs> well, you just admitted to three. I'm In clumsy. Last year or something like that. Last winter. Last winter. It just got my. This, it's oh, just one of the year. things that bothered me about living here in the winters, right? Is you know how what we just kind I... of accept it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Accept the the freezing frigid weather. Yeah. Well, you have no choice, but you know what else I don't, Erwin, I haven't bought my kids boots, snow pants, gloves, mitts, hats, scarves. Yeah. Haven't bought them any of that stuff. Hockey this year. equipment. <laughs> no, no new, no new snow equipment whatsoever. You know, no car scrapers, no, 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 no salt for my own driveways. Yeah. <laughs> Still got to buy salt for other driveways. Yeah. But um, yeah, you know, so with all the money I save, I can afford to uh, drink so much that I slip here inside of a pool. <laughs> hey, any, any lessons on moving to Costa Rica? Would you have done it sooner knowing what you know today? I don't know, man. I mean, like, I, and I don't know how long, you know, like James is doing quite well, but you know, things happen and if i didn't have somebody there i wouldn't be able to do this i don't think yeah you know so so it's circumstantial right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it, it, um and it may be that at some point you know we find that we need to come back i don't know i would like to stay here and that's the goal so i'm going to work towards it as hard as i can that's really the only uh the only thing i could say you know that's funny because your James is in, in Ontario. My James at Moneybags Mags is, <laughs> is in Hocko Beach, five hours down so, south of you. <laughs> I actually, uh, when last time I was in Hocko, I snapped a picture, um, you know, by because I know where James's condo is. So I snapped a picture by his place. I'm like, you here? And he's like, no. <laughs> it was like last, last uh, March or something like that. Yeah. 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 I think, I think it will be there for March break this time. Yeah. Awesome. Rob, thanks so much for doing this. Congrats on all your success and enjoying the nice weather. Jealous of you. I'll, oh, I'll, I'll come you. visit sometime. I'll stay at I'll, I'll stay at that Airbnb. Hopefully you can get the friends and family discount on some Airbnbs from your clients. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll get the discount. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, where can people follow you? Oh, uh they can follow oh boy. Did, did I I thought I sent that stuff to you? I think it's rob.break on Instagram. And, and, you know, people can email me at rob at mrbreakthrough.ca. Excellent. Is rob.break, uh, which, where are you covering Costa Rica on the, uh, on, on Instagram? Yeah, I'm covering everything there. I put out the podcast, um, the new show uh, announcements there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ontario, what we're doing there and, and what we're doing here. So yeah, a bit of everything. Awesome. all mixed in together awesome rob glad we finally got this done yeah <laughs> have an amazing time i'm sure i don't need to tell you that though you too thanks for having me man all right good to talk to you talk Peace. soon later thank you for listening if you want to learn how to invest in real estate from scratch my team teaches uh, beginners how to use the number one investment strategy in the virtual free training class every month Go to investortraining.ca slash podcast to register for our next class. 
I publish an episode here every week, so subscribe if you want to keep learning from seasoned investors like myself and my guests. Again, if you're ready to learn the nitty gritty about real estate investing, register for our next free virtual training class at investortraining.ca slash podcast. Again, thanks for listening to the show. Talk to you next week.